Could Ukraine negotiate an end to the war with Russia? And what does Crimea have to do with it? And what do smart bombs have to do with that? Let's talk about that and more. Keep in mind, link down below is a coupon code that expires tonight on the programs I'm building your wealth. Smart bombs going to Ukraine. Yes, uh, there. this is a real thing. The Financial Times just reported, apparently the US is set to provide smart bombs uh, to Ukraine. Now keep in mind, what we are trying to do as much as possible is uh, apparently this is the decision of uh, the American leadership uh, and NATO and, and the European allies to uh, basically provide more and more and more stuff and weapons to Ukraine to try to take down U uh, Russia and force them into a settlement. Remember, we started providing helmets uh, and, and, and initial money uh, to Ukraine. Uh, Germany, for example, it was helmets and bulletproof vests. Other parts of Europe were providing boots. That then turned into rounds of ammunition to where Germany was down to a stockpile of ammunition of just 48 hours. 48 hours. That's all they had left was 48 hours of uh, ammunition. Uh, and, uh, it, it, and now we've moved on to providing armored personnel carriers uh, and tanks, which Joe Biden suggested there was no way we were going to send tanks because that would implicate World War III to Ukraine. Now tanks are being sent to Ukraine. Now it'll take a few weeks for uh, troops to get trained on these, both strategically and technically, but it takes about five to six weeks. It'll probably take about three months for the first tanks to actually get to Ukraine. But now the Financial Times is talking about the US, the United States, is set to provide longer range smart bombs uh, to uh, Ukraine. These are small diameter bombs that would double Ukraine's current strike range as part of another nearly $2.2 billion aid package to be announced today. The smart bombs have a range of 94 miles and can be fired from several kinds of rocket launchers, including HIMARS missile defense systems. And uh, Ukraine's been asking for longer range missile defense systems. Uh, however, the United States is worried that they would use those to strike deeper into Russian targets. Uh, although these missiles already allow people uh, or uh, Ukrainians to strike deeper. However, not as deep as the Army Tactical Missile System, which is something Ukraine's been asking for, gets you about 185 miles of range. Now, one of the reasons these these smart bombs and sort of this, this spending on Ukraine is important is because there's an expectation of potentially Ukraine trying to take back Crimea. Now, that would be a massive, massive blow for Russia. In fact, there's a really good Financial Times piece on exactly this. And it briefly talks about what Ukraine needs to liberate Crimea. Uh, and in, in essence, they've talked about not only is uh, Ukraine going to need tanks to liberate Crimea, but they're going to need jets. And now this is something that right now Schultz uh, is, uh, the Chancellor of Germany is sort of backpedaling on the idea of even wanting to talk about jets, uh, suggesting, hey, let's just focus on tanks right now. But listen, everything Ukraine's been asking for so far, they've gotten. Singers, Patriot missile bays, uh, uh, javelins, you want more uh, weapons, you want more money, you want armored personnel carriers, you want tanks. They've gotten everything they've been asking for. So it's just a matter of time before they get jets. Uh, but if they do get the Gen 4 F-16 fighter jets, uh, it is potentially likely uh, that Ukraine could actually launch a pretty strong offensive uh, on, on Crimea, which uh, Russia illegally annexed in 2014. Now, Russia, of course, uh, was able to pull that off without a, a prolonged battle at all uh, because of the location where uh, Crimea is being relatively strategic for Russia to not only supply materials, but uh, uh, essentially more weapons and troops to continue the fight within, actually, uh, Ukraine. I think it's worth taking a brief look at the map just to sort of understand the tactical battlefield a little bit here. Crimean Peninsula is over here. If Ukraine were to take Crimea, uh, it would really potentially block Russia off uh, of, of the Sea of Azov uh, over here, uh, if, where, where they're essentially supplying materials uh, and weapons to Crimea to launch attacks from the southern regions of Ukraine. And this would really allow Ukraine to not only seal Russia off of uh, Crimea if they were able to take this and actually have a naval chance to, to prevent uh, Russia's, uh, a, a, as much Russian activity in the Black Sea because now you're cutting off the Sea of Azov over here, so, you, so you've got to go around. Uh, but what you have is the potential to lock down Kherson 
prevent the attacks on Kherson and really start moving Russia back and prevent the incursion that's happening here into the regions that are expected to potentially be negotiated away to Russia, uh, like Donetsk. So uh, Crimea would be pretty, pretty strategic. Uh, and the Financial Times, or sorry, not the Financial Times, Foreign Affairs magazine has been regularly talking about the, the strength uh, of a negotiating power that uh, Ukraine would have if they took Ukraine, if they took Crimea, even to the point of taking uh, Crimea and taking the uh, massive, massive naval uh, uh, facility that Russia has over here at Sevastopol. Uh, it w would be such a huge blow to Russia that a lot of folks uh, and military experts think that Russia would actually be forced into uh, a negotiated uh, settlement if the Crimean Peninsula was actually taken over. They say here, without a land bridge or road or rail links to Crimea, the Kremlin would be forced to revert to maritime resupply of, uh, of their troops. Uh, that, uh, that, let me, let's make that very clear. An easy way to get tr uh, troops and supplies into Ukraine right now is right here. Through Russia, through Crimea, and then into the Kherson area. But again, if, uh, if, if this is held by Ukraine, and so is Crimea, that's blocked off. Now you want to resupply here, you're either going through the front lines, which is difficult, or you're going over the sea. But now Ukraine potentially has uh, a, a military and naval access uh, to the sea as well, potentially limiting exactly that sort of resupply. It's a great way to potentially choke off Russia's uh, activity. Now, uh, the expectation is Ukrainian forces would need to carry out weeks of strikes uh, onto targets, including logistic hubs, air bases, command and control center, and naval installa installations. It would take a lot of work. But... The, uh, the uh, Foreign Affairs magazine believes that it could actually be pulled off as long as uh, more tanks and ultimately jets get supplied to Ukraine. So the Foreign Affairs mag, they're big fans of continuing this sort of supplying. Now, the problem is the more, and this is where they do suggest uh, there are some risks. The problem is if Ukraine takes Crimea, there's a belief that it would take it would be such a huge blow in in fighting Russia that potentially Russia would be incentivized to maybe carry out its first nuclear its strategic and tactical strikes against Crimea because it's a peninsula it's it's, a, it's almost an island you could say uh, it's we're technically a peninsula because it's it, it's attached over here but it's not like a Florida peninsula uh, it looks like an island uh, and and so there's a belief that this is so strategically important to Russia that if Russia loses this, it could potentially be where uh, the, the first nuclear uh, strategic strikes are attempted. Of course, this would, uh, would, would, would lead to a lot of uh, potential talk about World War III. And this is why there are a lot of people saying, look, no, no. Just, just stop. Stop supplying weapons. Stop supplying uh, uh, Ukraine. Stop funding Ukraine. We don't, we don't want to push Russia to the edge of considering nuclear strikes. Of course, this is possibly also one of the strongest positions that Ukraine could end up having for negotiating uh, a settlement uh, uh, with uh, Russia. Uh, so we'll see. Who knows? But this is uh, this is uh, something to be paying attention to. So if you're watching the Ukraine war and uh, the takeover of the Crimean Peninsula, could be uh, strategically the the best uh, move for Ukraine. But they're going to need a lot more support. And so far, it looks like the EU, NATO, <clears throat> and the United States are willing to provide that. Especially since now we're talking about smart bombs. Uh, being sent to Ukraine uh, by the uh, Financial Times reporting that $2.2 billion aid package expected to be announced today.